In this video, we're going to look at how to use the Pythagorean theorem. So for Pythagorean theorem, it is only able to be used in right triangles. So you have to have a 90 degree angle in order to use this. Um, and in the Pythagorean theorem, the most important part is to identify the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is always the side um, directly across from this 90 degree angle. And often in um, the Pythagorean theorem, we would call this side C. One thing that I also think is important to note is that the hypotenuse is always, always, always the longest side. Then the other two sides in your triangle are called the legs. So these sides that actually make that right angle are called legs. And um, generally we call those A and B. So the Pythagorean theorem, you actually take the hypotenuse squared and that is equal to the legs squared and added together. So a squared plus b squared. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared. It doesn't matter what order the a and b go in. That's why I said the c value or the hypotenuse is most important. That's the one that needs to be by itself. And then the other two sides need to be squared and added together. So let's take a look at a couple examples here. So we're going to be looking for this side and this side. And so I'll just put a variable on there. One thing I like to do is um, draw an arrow across from the 90 degree angle to point out the hypotenuse and then circle that value to make sure that I get the correct C value. So this, this value in this triangle, um, so for C squared equals A squared plus b squared. The c value in this case is x. So we'd have x squared equals. And then the legs in this one are 6 and 8. And so we can put those in any order here, but 6 squared plus 8 squared. Then you'll just go ahead and simplify anything you can. So we have x squared equals 36 plus 64. 36 and 64 on the same side of the equation. So we will just combine those. So 36 plus 64 is 100. To get X alone or to undo a squared, we would square root both sides and we end up with X equals 10. So then I like to check and make sure because this one's the hypotenuse. So this one should be the longest length. So 10 compared to 6 and 8 makes sense that that would be the longest for the hypotenuse. All right, then this next one, um, again, identifying the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse here is, again, the x. So we'd have x squared equals the legs squared and added together. And the legs in this one are 4 and 7. So 4 squared plus 7 squared or the reverse. It won't matter. So then x squared equals 16 plus 49. Add together 16 and 49 since they're on the same side of the equation and we get 65. So then we can square root both sides here. And um, if you need to leave it in simplified radical form, that would just be the square root of 65. If you can leave it in decimal form, you can just type this into your, into your calculator and you would get about 8.09. So again, 8.09 for the hypotenuse there makes sense because that's bigger than um, 4 and 7. Let's take a look at um, two more examples here. So we have these two triangles, and we want to find that missing side length. So we'll just call it x again. Identify the hypotenuse. So across from the 90, in this case, is the 14. So that's our C value. So we would do 14 squared equals the legs squared and added together. And the legs in this one are 9 and x. So we'll have 9 squared plus x squared. 
14 squared is 196, so that equals 9 squared, which is 81, plus x squared. Now the 81 and 96 are not on the same side, so in order to get the 81 off of this side, we're going to subtract 81 to both sides. So then 196 minus 81 is 115, and that equals x squared since 81 minus 81 is 0. So we will square root both sides here to get x by itself. And again, if you need to leave this in simplified radical form, that would just be square root of 115. Otherwise, you can type this into your calculator here um, and get the decimal version of this and the square root of 115 as a decimal is about 10.72. So then this side here would be 10.72. Again, that makes sense because it's less than the hypotenuse and the hypotenuse has to be the longest. All right, then last problem we're gonna look at here is this one. Identify the hypotenuse again, across from the 90 is the 25. So we'll do 25 squared, set that equal to the legs squared and added together. Legs in this case are x and 20, so x squared and 20 squared. So 25 squared is 625, that equals x squared plus 400. Need to get the 400 to the other side so that we have this x squared alone. So we will subtract 400 from both sides. That will give us 225 equals x squared. So then we will square root both sides. And square root of 225 is 15. So x equals 15. Again, this makes sense because it's smaller than the hypotenuse of 25.